start the record of the session. Uh, so please keep your microphone muted during uh, 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 the presentation. And as I just said, at the end of the session, uh, you will have the opportunity to, to, to put some uh, questions to, to the presenters. Uh, all these uh, presentations will be posted on the Open Science, uh, Open Science Fair website and also on, on Zenodo. And, uh, and the recordings will be also available on, on the YouTube channel of the Open Science Fair and uh, again in, in Zenodo. And of course, we, you are invited and we strongly encourage you to use the, 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 the social media and uh, the, the, to, 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 to interact uh, about the, the Open Science Fair. So please use the, the hashtags Open Science Fair 2021 and, uh, and, uh, and our Twitter handle Open Science Fair uh, uh, and to, to, to engage on, on social uh, media. And of course, last but not least, uh, we uh, I want to stress that uh, we have a, a, a code of conduct, and we expect all the the attendees, uh, the and the speakers, and uh, and uh, the partners, and of course ourselves from the organizing committee to to uh, to adhere to this code of conduct throughout the entire event. So, with all the housekeeping done, I think we are uh, ready to 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 start this. Uh, session, uh, we will have uh, uh, six uh, uh, interesting uh, talks uh, uh, from uh, different uh, 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 perspective or angles, but uh, uh, many of, of them, uh, or, or I can say probably all of them, are uh, uh, about uh, uh, they have a kind of a common theme that is the, 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 the impact and the assessment of, of open science. So uh, we have uh, uh, that from uh, from a more uh, 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 exploratory uh, and uh, and research point of, of view, uh, especially on the on the on the first uh, presentation, to uh, uh, a very concrete study of uh, a university in uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Japan to to to, uh, to several other approaches about uh, 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 reforming and using new tool, tools for for research assessment and uh, for for evaluating the the, the research impact so uh, without further ado so I, I will just present uh, uh, briefly uh, these six uh, presentations so we the first one is open science so is left behind the, the, some results from on merit project and will be presented by Ilaria Fava the second one uh, is a uh, uh, will be presented by Leonard Stoy, and it's about uh, 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 driving assessment reform through collaboration, the approach of the Utopia European University. Uh, the, th the third one uh, is uh, uh, will be presented from by uh, Shifumi Nishioka. I'm sorry if, if I'm not pronouncing all your names correctly. Uh, uh, and the, the title Citation Adventures of Green Open Access Articles, a case study from at Kyoto University. The next one, uh, uh, reviewing reviewers, an innovative tool for improving quality of local diamond open access journals, to be presented by Nikola Stanich. Uh, uh, then, uh, uh, Skull Explorer and Open Citations as the New Frontier of Open Citation Indexing, that will be presented by Silvio Peroni. Uh, uh, and, uh, and finally, uh, I, I did not get uh, uh, the confirmation who will be presenting. Uh, uh, I saw on the on the participant uh, 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 on the attendance list of this uh, session, Elias Canelo. I don't know if it will be him or one of the others. Uh, we have the the, the, the sixth presentation is the the BIP toolbox for scientific impact assessment and applications. So you all have, as I already told you, you all all have seven minutes. I will let you know when you have one minute. Uh, left and uh, and uh, uh please let's try to 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 stick to the timing also to have some time for questions and discussion at the end so uh ilaria uh the floor is yours uh please thank you Thanks. and go, go ahead okay can you see it full screen okay Okay, so thanks for uh, being here and listening to this lightning talk that's about um, the On Merit project. Uh, the tagline of the project is Open Science Who's Left Behind, because the, um, the aim of this two years and a half project is to understand who's left behind in open science. Um, On Merit is a project that um, 
the acronym says observing and negating Matthew effects in responsible research and innovation transition and it combines a series of different methods from sociological to bibliometric and to computational approaches to to find out who's left outside uh, in open science. Um, the aim of the project is to contribute to a more equitable scientific system that rewards researchers based on their merit rather than uh, on the usual privileges. Uh, and it does so by investigating the impact of open science practices in academia, industry, and policymaking. It also focuses on three specific pillars of the UNESCO Sustainable Development Goals that are agriculture, climate, and health. It examines uh, the role of gender across all investigated research questions that you will see in a few. And um, the final objective is to suggest a set of uh, evidence-based recommendations for science policies, uh, for indicators and for possible incentives uh, that could help mitigating the Matthew effects. Um, just a very quick um, like overview. Um, Open science is an umbrella term that also includes RRI and a series of principles. But um, the, uh, as, you, as you see from this slide, uh, the, the fully uptake of open science practices depends on a series of um, things that should be in place, like, for example, infrastructure, resources, training, support, and last but not least, the political will. But the access to all of these advantages is not equally distributed. And therefore, this could lead to the so-called Matthew effect in science that was formulated by Robert Merton in 1968 uh, that, that, and, and that can be summed up in the, the sentence, the rich getting richer, and that can be applied to um, research as well. And this in particular is applied to open science in the sense that, for example, uh, early adopter of open science can be more rewarded for their work in open science than latecomers, or uh, there could be geographical location or institutional based or uh, gender issues preventing, um, let's say, a, a, an, an equal uptake of open science. So um, this is the issue. And the research questions uh, that on, on merit aims at investigating uh, span from academia to industry to policymaking uh, with like the aim of investigating each of these and trying to find an answer. So um, this lightning talk will focus on specific answers from two research trends. Uh, one is the extent of barriers to accessing scientific literature, and the one and the other one is about the information-seeking behaviors amongst amongst policy make, makers. Sorry, uh, the first one, um, the research questions that we're taking into account are the following: so, who is producing and benefiting from open access, and also, how is institutional performance related to the application of our right policies and open access publishing? And also um, those questions were um, examined with an eye on the three um, pillars of the uh, UNESCO Sustainable Deve Development Goals that on merit focuses on. So um, very quickly, uh, there will be a deliverable specifically focusing on these uh, coming up in the next two weeks. Um, who is producing and benefiting from open access? As you can imagine, um, most highly ranked institutions are both greater producers and greater consumers of open access compared to lower ranked institutions. Although, of course, the size of this difference can vary depending on the ranking news. And here uh, we are using the VOR and the um, Leiden metrics. Um, about institutional performance related to the application of RRI and open access publishing policies, there is a medium strong correlation between the number of government mandating policies about RRI and institutional prestige and the, there is a high, there are area levels of public engagement with science in countries where these policies are more embedded at the governmental level. Uh, also about uh, the structure of knowledge production in research, about the three UN Sustainable uh, Development Goals, uh, there is an increasing number of publication overall in those three areas that's published open access. 
but um, in those publications, uh, the gender distribution is not equal as well as, academ as, a, well as academic age. Um, on the other hand, uh, there is a decrease, uh, was, sorry, there is an increase in the number of female authorships. About information seeking behaviors, um, the two research questions were mainly uh, who is influencing public participation in policy making and which actors uh, actually participate in policy making um, when um, an open science or an RRI approach to research and science policy link is taken. So um, the knowledge of the policy process is the key for engagement. And um, of course, unfortunately, academic institutional norms and policy making don't align very much. Uh, and this is affect, uh, this affect the research uptake. Um, then um, inequalities shape research processes and there are science policy links. And RRI as RRI, so Responsible Research and Innovation, um, is received much more positively than just open science as an umbrella term, as it is perceived uh, of mitigating as of mitigating inequalities and fostering a more equitable and engagement uh, an equitable engagement with policymakers. So th that's it. I hope it was uh, on time. And yeah, please add any of your questions in the chat. Thank you very much, uh, Ilar. It was perfectly on time. So thank you very much. Uh, sorry. So I now invite uh, uh, um, Leonard uh, Stoy that uh, will present uh, the Utopia uh, approach to uh, uh, assessment reform. Please, Leonard, can you share your slides? Yes, I will do that now, and I think you should see it. Yeah, thank you very much um, for or for the opportunity to present this here. Um, I can say uh, as much in the beginning. This is a project that is really just starting its journey. So we you will hear now what we are going to do in the future. But it was also really good to see a project before that actually has already like done a little bit of research into the topics that we at least can try to tackle practically as an alliance. Um, I work at the Freie Universität Brüssel and the Utopia European University is so an alliance of uh, originally six and now nine universities that are funded by this European instrument for collaboration uh, amongst higher uh, education institutions. And the issue is, I think that probably everybody knows this uh, more or less, there are plenty of, of issues with current uh, metrics and assessment approaches used, especially the dominant ones, uh, such as, well, the, the impact factors and the age index and the technical issues uh, that they have, the, the problems of the data that is the foundation for their calculation, they're misused for the assessment of individuals. And so their dominance, uh, this creates challenges for uh, open science and the idea that we want to essentially incentivize and reward a broader array of uh, academic activities uh, and outputs uh, in research assessment. And this is really a stumbling uh, stone for that. And uh, was what was what was mentioned before as well, also for uh, issues such as equity, diversity and, uh, and inclusion. This is also um, a challenge that kind of can hinder that depending on uh, the indicator because they have certain uh, at least uh, results that are uh, not so positive uh, in that regard. So this is not just a problem of an individual university and this is maybe a slide that many of you have seen at the last uh, open science fair in 2019. This is really something that is uh, an issue across universities here seen from the European University Association across Europe, which is very much showing that um, assessment and the things that matter for academic careers are still dependent on publication, uh, uh, publications such as journal output and also research funding. So it's not very diverse yet. And changing the system because it's so ingrained uh, at, at the, in the sector of universities and higher education institutions and probably other research organizations is really a thing that is hard to tackle for a single uh, university or a single institution, but only uh, through certain like I think alliances of, uh, of really uh, universities or networks that um, 
try to approach this, there is some, I think, a better chance of really success at the systemic level. This is uh, shown, I think, very well in the case of the European universities. So, you know, certainly a, a few front runners that have done this individually, and we can probably name the, the universities on, on two hands only. And there are some countries such as the Netherlands, Norway, and Finland, just to mention those who have like concerted approaches to uh, research assessment reforms. This is really, uh, I think, important to watch. Now, at European level, there's also now the instrument of European universities, um, which was originally more focused on the higher education side and collaboration in this area. But now we have, I think, 41 alliances with at least 280 members. And they also have at least a mandate to, to look into research assessment reform, especially for the ones that have later received um, funding through Horizon 2020 projects, that were like a top-up funding for that, which really very clearly have the, the, the message that uh, universities should develop new academic uh, career assessment systems, try out new metrics and uh, approaches for that. Um, that was also just very recently highlighted by the European Council when they talked about European universities as a test bed for innovative uh, approaches, including career assessment and reward systems. And within the, the Utopia Alliance, we have now, uh, we've started with six partners in this very specific uh, Utopia Train project, which is the one that looks also into open science and, uh, and assessment. We have the University of Gothenburg, uh, Pompeo Fabra in Barcelona, Warwick, uh, CY. A university in Paris at a VUB in Brussels and University of Ljubljana as well. And just last week, it was expanded to uh, University of Nova in, in Lisbon and the Technical, Technical University of Dresden and also the Kafuskari University in Venice. So this is, I think, really a good test bed to try out things so that you don't just bowl alone in terms of assessment reforms, but that you can do something together. And this should increase the impact of what we're doing. Now, very practically, this is, this is the plan of what we have in mind. We want to really uh, break it down into several building blocks and to get a process that leads us somewhere. So the first thing that we want to try is, is really to discuss very broadly about the, the, the values and the mission of the universities and the alliance itself to really derive a future framework policy from that. So not to start with discussing which individual metric can we use maybe, but to think first, okay, what actually are the activities that we want to incentivize and reward? And open science is a part of that, but of course it's a broader discussion. So this is, um, let's say, I don't want to assume too much about only open science in this process, but there might be also uh, results about the, the more balance between innovation, entrepreneurship, research, and education in this, uh, in this whole process. And based from this uh, first reflection, we would like to, we plan to draft a, a framework policy on research assessment that especially, essentially describes the, the dimensions that should be assessed and evaluated and then propose um, suitable um, elements and levels and, and also tools and approaches oh, yeah, for this. Yeah, um, approach. um, so that um, we have essentially a toolbox that universities can use, that we don't need to harmonize all the assessment systems at like six to nine individual universities. That's very difficult to agree on every single indicator across uh, universities and departments, but that we have a certain set of elements and common approaches that are recognized and implemented more or less in subsidiarity across the partners. One minute, Leonard. Oh, well, I'm going to hurry up. And based on this, uh, well, each new individual university will draft, uh, uh, say, individual implementation roadmaps where they really decide uh, what are the practical steps that they want to take in the mid to short term, well, short to mid term uh, in this area. Uh, next to that, there's also a line of activity on uh, mainstreaming this across the alliance. So the alliance projects and maybe fellowships that we can give out in these projects could be a test bed as well for incentivizing actually uh, uh, open science and, and implementing this in the, in the projects that are being funded. We've based this on the iNorm scope process. So uh, this was very helpful as a, as a tool to start um, thinking about this. You can see it here. Um, we will have a very I think broad discussions across the Alliance, but you can see that we had an idea to start with broad steps and then narrow it down over time. Now, uh, just as the last <laughs> slide, Eloy, so just to conclude, we really want to build a, a framework policy for assessment that includes open science around the partners that is really build on overarching principles and dimensions, but then have the tools ready so that partners can implement it 
within their institutional context and setting so that it fits there as well. And it's not, not a fully harmonized approach, but mutually recognizing each other's uh, a pro a way of, of assessing research, essentially. We also do uh, want to do this very openly uh, with our partners uh, in the Alliance, but also learn from the international good practices. And also here in this context, this is why we want to share this here, is that we want to certainly learn about other alliances and universities that are maybe doing this and where we can talk to each other how to actually scale this up, let's say in Europe or in other contexts, because it's, it's nothing that even a single alliance should do just on its own. And thank, thank you very much. You have your details here. And uh, that was it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Leonard. Uh, interesting project. I, I, uh, I think we all have time for, for some questions at, at the end. So let's uh, uh, move on to, to our next uh, uh, presenter. It's uh, uh, Shifumi Nishioka. Sorry if I'm not saying your name correctly. That will present uh, a, a, a study made in, in uh, Kyoto University. So please, Shifumi. Hi, uh, thank you very much for uh, the introduction. And uh, first of all, thank you very much for giving uh, me this great opportunity to present our work. So, moment. So uh, let me start from introducing to Kyoto University open access policy as background of this right wing talk. In 2015, we adopted the policy to promote our research and public accountability. And uh, the policy mandates faculty members to deposit a digital copy of their scholarly articles to our institutional repository, uh, which is named Kurenai. So the policy promotes green open access. And uh, let me introduce to our our institutional repository, Kurenai. Kurenai is implemented based on DSpace 560. And uh, at the moment, the, uh, Kurenai publishes over 200,000 records with full text. So Kurenai is in recent placed at fifth uh, in transparent ranking institutional repositories by Google Scholar. Regarding resources available on Kurenai, Kurenai publishes intellectual outcomes by Kyoto University, including scholarly articles, bulletins, dissertations, and education materials, and so on. In this writing talk, I would like to focus on scholarly articles that are deposited to Kurenai to implement green open access. 2020 uh, was the year, five years after adopting the open access policy at Kyoto University. So we evaluated outcomes and effects of the policy. We conducted a questionnaire to faculty members as well as bibliometric analysis. In this writing talk, I would like to focus on the bibliometric analysis. This slide describes how we collected and uh, processed data for the bibliometric analysis. First, we collected scholarly articles. Specifically, we retrieved scholarly articles from Scopus that meet these four criteria. And uh, we classify them into two groups that are scholarly articles deposited to Kurenai and non-deposited scholarly articles. As the metrics of bibliometric analysis, we use the number of citations, citations from other fields, and a uh, number of downloads. And uh, we use uh, the open citations index of CrossF open DOI to DOI citations, uh, which is usually called Koki, uh, to calculate number of citations. And we used access logs on Kurenai to count the number of downloads. So this uh, table shows the result regarding the number of citations. We observed that scholarly articles available on Kurenai have been cited uh, more than their counterpart. 
And uh, in addition, we see that uh, the difference in the number of citations of articles co-authored with foreign researchers depending on availability on Kurenai is uh, smaller than the difference in the number of citations of all articles depending on the availability of Kurenai. So we understand that uh, Kurenai contributes to increasing uh, the number of citations of scholarly articles that are not co-authored with foreign researchers. And in terms of the number of citations from other fields, uh, publications in other fields account for a higher percentage among publications that cite deposited articles compared to among uh, that cite non-deposited articles. So based on this observation, we think that uh, Kurenai and uh, institutional repository can contribute to increasing citations by scholarly articles in different fields and promoting interdisciplinary research. And uh, we also measure the number of downloads of scholarly articles available on Kurenai. We find that uh, scholarly articles that are open access only on institutional repositories have been downloaded more frequently than those that are also open access on other platforms. In this sense, uh, as the number of submissions of scholarly outcomes to Kurenai has increased, it takes some time until a deposited article becomes available on the repository. So that uh, we think uh, it would be helpful to introduce a system that prioritizes publication of scholarly articles that are not open access on any other platforms when processing submissions. So uh, this is the final slide of this lightning talk. So we show that uh, pre bibliometric analysis of scholarly articles on Kurenai, but we think that uh, further analysis uh, is needed to make uh, concrete conclusions, uh, such as considering selection bias of scholarly articles. But uh, the analysis so far present uh, that the institutional repository has contributed to increasing the number of citations uh, that are not co-authored with foreign researchers and uh, increasing citations by scholarly articles in different fields. So uh, in this writing talk, uh, I would like to conclude that the institutional repository facilitates uh, dissemination of outputs to wider communities and promote interdisciplinary research and contribute to increasing diversity in scholarship. And in addition, we find that discovery articles are uh, open access on the repository have been used more frequently. So in the future, we would like to introduce to a system to the repository uh, that prioritizes publication of scholarly articles that are not open access on any other platforms when processing submissions to the repository. For that purpose, we need an open access monitoring system. And uh, in the final slide, I would like to express my acknowledgement to my colleagues, especially uh, in, at uh, Open Access Committee and Open Access Promotion Project team uh, in Kyoto University Library Network. So thank you very much uh, for hearing my presentation. Thank you very much, Shifumi. You almost uh, perfectly uh, comply with uh, with the timing, so just ah, some, great. Some, <laughs> some seconds more, but uh, mm -hmm. that's uh, perfectly uh, fine. So, uh, so we will have for sure we will have uh, some time for questions at the end. But again, I, I invite all the all participants to to not forget their their questions or comments. You can already write them on the chat, and then we'll try to come back to it at the end. So uh, we can move on to the next presenter. That will be Nikola Steinich uh, that uh, 
will be uh, talking about uh, an innovative tool for improving the quality of local diamond open access journals by reviewing reviewers. Nicola, please, can you put it in, in presentation more? So we see. Open... Can you see it? Yeah, it's yeah, good. great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, my name is Nikola Stanic and I am project manager at Center for Evaluation in Education and Science in Belgrade, Serbia. Uh, and I will be presenting the lightning talk entitled Reviewing the Reviews, an innovative tool for improving quality of local diamond open access journals. Uh, just a few view, uh, words about the st uh, st uh, st uh, status of uh, our organization. We are a non-for-profit organization, earlier financed by the Ministry of Science of Republic of Serbia, but now we have new business model which is sustainable and is based on cooperation between uh, a web publisher, uh, non-profit web publisher, which uh, we are, and uh, journal owners, and also some finances are coming under special contracts with universities. Our main areas of expertise are building an open access digital infrastructure. We put uh, much effort to ensure journals quality, then enhancing articles quality, and we do promoting and selecting best journals internationally. Our main products are uh, Syndex, that's Serbian Citation Index, few words later about that. Syndex Assistant, the general management system that we use, and GBR General Bibliometric Report. A uh, few words about Syndex. Uh, that is a hybrid open access platform, which means that it has full text database and uh, it, is, uh, it is citation index uh, at the same. Uh, Syndex is highly integrated with our OJS based general management system, which is called Syndex Assistant, Syndex Assistant, and is a source for evaluating and promoting journals quality and also the best journals internationally, as I mentioned above. Um, this is the part of Syndex interface. Uh, as you can see, we put uh, much attention, we give much attention to quality control and uh, some of our services. Uh, control quality of the journals and uh, other entities. Uh, so we are preventing uh, plagiarism via identicate uh, plagiarism checker. Uh, organizational, uh, we promote organizational efficiency and transparency of editorial procedures. We do harmonization with COPE recommendations since we are the members of COPE. And uh, of course, one more thing for quality control is reviewing the reviews that you will hear about today. Um, that is actually reviewing reviewers is, is, a, uh, is a tool which is enabling the assessment of the usefulness of peer review reports. It's a kind of upgrade to the reviewer rating system by editorial boards, which is uh, already included in original OJS. This only also includes author's questionnaire and statistic, statistics module, which is accumulating results. Uh, that composite score of, uh, of uh, RR is used by editorial boards to decide about selecting reviewers in the future. And we use it also for awarding the best uh, reviewers every year uh, with, uh, uh, with award the, the, the reviewer of the year and acknowledgements for outstanding reviewers. Um, uh, to use uh, RR in our general management system is not obligatory, but uh, uh, right now is only exceptionally not used, even though in the beginning it was disputed but by uh, some editorial boards. How do authors uh, uh, rate uh, uh, the peer reviews? Uh, for co-authored manuscripts, questionnaire is filled by corresponding author, and he is supposed to consult the co-authors previously. Previously, uh, uh, yes. Uh, the results of assessments are not available to reviewers. Here uh, you can see the author's questionnaire. 
And um, I just want to mention on this slide that the difference between uh, uh, editorial board rating and author's rating of, of peer reviewing is that editorial boards rate quality of uh, uh, peer reviews and uh, authors actually rate contribution to improvement of their submitted manuscript. So uh, that's the difference uh, between uh, those two. Uh, I can show you some uh, first uh, results, uh, uh, effects after introducing uh, reviewing reviewers. We took two previous years, 2019-2021, uh, in comparison to the period preceding the implementation of reviewing reviewers and uh, arbitrarily selected indicators of change in reviewers' behavior were used. In this table, you can see the indicators and the values uh, before and after introduction of uh, reviewing reviewers. Uh, indicators reflecting higher reviewers' helping effort are given in blue and they increased. And yet there are some, actually two un uh, unexpected changes, changes given in red which is share of reviews with attachments and average number, number of word in, words in comments. Um, we actually uh, consider the final proof that RR is efficient by this table. Actually, the frequency of re reviewers' recommendations before and after uh, introduction of RR. You can see here that the percentage of conditionally accepted manuscripts given in blue increased at the expense of unconditionally accepted, red, after, in, in the period after. And we consider that uh, as a proof that RR is efficient. Um, I have to say uh, something about the award, annual award we are giving. It's uh, based off RR results. Uh, we give it to the six uh, Frascati areas to the best reviewers. Award uh, is comprised of uh, diploma and voucher. Uh, amount uh, we give is 1,500 uh, euros, which is quite uh, high for Serbian standards in our budget. And the last year, year's winner was Professor Slobodan Jankovic, uh, who, uh, who works at faculty and uh, of Medicine University of Kragujevac. Uh, more information you can get on our websites and on main products, which links you can see here. And I, I will be more than happy to answer your questions later. Hope I didn't exceed the time. <laughs> Just for a few seconds, so that's that's good enough. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, again, I think we will have opportunity there. I think there is already at least one question on the chat, but uh, we will have the opportunity to, to go back to it at the end. So uh, let's just uh, move on to, to the next uh, a lightning talk. It will be by Silvio Peroni that will uh, talk about uh, Skull Explorer and, and, uh, and Open Citation. So Silvio, please. Okay, uh, I hope you can see my slides. Yeah, yes. Okay, great. Uh, so good, good morning, everyone. I'm Silvio Peroni from the University of Bologna, and I'm here to present the joint work done with uh, Alessia Bardi, Al uh, Sandro Labruzzo, and Paolo Manghi about Skull Explorer and Open Citation. But before starting describing these two um, actors, let's say just a bit of context about uh, why we, we are working together to reach the, the basically this goal is that the whole idea comes from a European Horizon 2020 project called Euro, uh, Open Air Nexus, uh, which aims at bringing in the European Open Science Cloud, 14 services providing open data about scholarly uh, communication scientific production in general. All these services are organized in three distinct portfolios, um, publish, monitor, and discover, and in particular, the monitor portfolio uh, provides services that are used to monitor open science, research impact, publication uses statistics and open citation indexes for article to article and article to dataset links. And this last part is exactly 
the, the let's say the domain of interest of the two services we are presenting today, Open Citation and Scholar Explorer. So uh, very quickly about Scholar Explorer, uh, it is a service that provides access to a huge set of links between data sets and literature object in general. Uh, all these information is released in CC by using a CC by license. And these specific links are uh, harvested from uh, several sources of scholar communication data. Uh, because the same entities can be present in these several sources, there is a need of uh, resolving them, harmonizing them, and de duplicating them, since uh, uh, these entities can be referred in these sources by using different practices. And this specific activity is done automatically by Skull Explorer that is able to duplicate the entity in order to avoid the duplication of the same information within the, uh, the, the collection of links between data set and literature. Um, on the other hand, Open Citation is an independent infrastructure organization which is fully dedicated to open scholarship and in particular the publication of open bibliographic uh, metadata and citation data. Uh, among the things that open citation provides, it defines a data model which is based on parentologies for describing all the entities that it uh, made available through its services. Uh, there are of course collection of citation data. The main one is the open citation indexes that contains several indexes there. Koki is the main one that contains the, 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 huge, the huge amount of citations and software and services that allow basically um, people to use this data uh, programmatically. Uh, so uh, very briefly, what uh, Score Explorer and Open Citation provide in terms of data? So Score Explorer provides more than 700 million links uh, that include citation links, uh, relation to supplement material to articles and other generic links that links data sets to other scholarly entities. Um, the, the full damp of this data is totally available on Zenodo for free. And Open Citations instead uh, in, cares about only citation links, uh, currently only DOI to DOI citation links and contains more than 1 billion citation links between publication. And again, here also all the data that Open Citation made available are uh, downloadable in full uh, in, on Figshare in several formats. In addition to the data, of course, both the services makes available several tools that allow users to access the data, to query this data. So Scholar Explorer provides a REST API and web interfaces to uh, access and query the data programmatically. And Open Citations, again, made available, makes available a REST APIs, several REST APIs, one for each specific collection that is there, uh, Sparkle endpoints uh, that allow you to use Sparkle for querying the data and web interfaces as well. As I mentioned before, all the software, and these two services that have been used to build up these two services is available online. Uh, and can be downloaded for any, any purpose. And again, just a very quick overview about some of the known users of these two services. As you can see, uh, there are even big players there, even big commercial players that are using these services that are free services. Uh, Skull Explorers, for instance, uh, uh, is used by Saival and Scopus, both um, things that are owned by Elsevier, while Open Citation have been used and is used by uh, several different kinds of services like visualization system, like viewer databases or uh, bibliographic uh, re um, repositories of data, lens.org, DBLP, journals, internet policy review, and ScanArt, which is a new application made available and um, financed by the French government um, for, for uh, let's say, uh, looking for scholarly material. Um, since the final goal here is to provide links uh, in order to push them, to make them available within the open air search graph, both the services use specific formats and in particular one format, which is Colix, which has been defi defined for enabling an easy exchange of information about links between scholarly, uh, scholarly entities, including literature and data that is maintained by the RDA WDS Scholar Link and Change Working Group. And this format is used both by uh, Scholar Explorer and Open Citation to export 
their data to uh, to the others, to external users, in order to enable their reuse, but also to exchange this data among uh, the open AI research graph and the two service uh, themselves. Um, and just uh, as a closing remark, um, a few uh, weeks ago, a few months ago, an article has been published in a quantitative science, a quantitative in science studies journal where um, was mentioned that for the very first time, we passed the, the, the threshold on 1 million billion citations available, open citation available in several system. The figure there is what uh, is, is conveying that information, but the figure doesn't include, for instance, uh, Skull Explorer and other open data sets out there. So it's almost probable that uh, we have more open citation available than those included in the figures. And what we want to reach here, the goal that we want to reach with these services and with, with the release of this huge mass of open citation is to avoid the institution and user to pay thousands of euros for accessing this kind of scholarly data. Uh, we want to make a user, uh, to enable user to reuse these citation data, these links for any possible purpose, uh, for building new application, for instance, uh, or to be using specific tasks like that one of research assessment in order to make this very delicate task uh, more transparent and reproducible by anyone. And finally, of course, we can use this data to build new application that enable, for instance, to support actors in the scholarly communication domain like authors or administrators to monitor research and to improve the discoverability of research products. And that's my timer. And that's all. Uh, basically, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Silvio. Thank you. You also comply with the time, so thank you. So uh, let's go for our last uh, speaker. I think it will be Tanasis Vergulis. Again, sorry for, for the pronunciation that will present us the BIP toolbox for scientific impact assessment and applications. So Tanasis, please go ahead. Uh, thanks. Uh, the pronunciation was nice. It was OK. okay. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, perfectly. Okay, uh, thanks. Uh, so, uh, hi, I'm Thanas Bergulis uh, from Athena Research Center. And uh, today I will present you uh, the functionalities of uh, the BIP uh, toolbox, uh, which is uh, a set of uh, tools and services uh, to uh, help with uh, uh, scientific impact assessment and uh, uh, to support uh, added value uh, services. Uh, first, uh, let me also mention that uh, this is a work that uh, has been uh, funded by uh, various uh, uh, projects, uh, the latest of uh, which is uh, Open Air Nexus, that Silvio also mentioned in the previous uh, presentation. Uh, so, uh, which is the problem that uh, we are trying to, to, to uh, resolve? Uh, the problem uh, of uh, the large uh, growth rate in the number of uh, published research uh, uh, works. Uh, this uh, growth rate uh, is constantly increasing. And uh, to make matters worse, uh, there are studies suggesting that uh, among this uh, vast uh, uh, knowledge base, uh, many of uh, the published works uh, are of questionable quality uh, or low impact. Uh, so, uh, in this context, uh, identifying uh, the most valuable publications uh, for any uh, given research topic of interest uh, is a very tedious and time-consuming task uh, for the researchers. Uh, but uh, how, uh, how did we get here? Uh, how, uh, why uh, the research output uh, is increasing uh, in, in that in, in these uh, intense uh, rates. Uh, one reason is uh, that, uh, uh, of course, because uh, we now have a, a larger number of researchers worldwide, uh, for example, based on uh, uh, an, a UNESCO uh, science report, uh, between 2007 and 2014, uh, we had a 20% increase in the number of researchers uh, worldwide. And this trend, is expected uh, to uh, continue. Uh, but uh, this is not uh, the only reason why uh, we expect, uh, uh, we experience uh, a large uh, uh, 
increase in the size of uh, the research output, in the volume of uh, the research output. Uh, the other important reason is uh, the dominance of the publish of the notorious publisher Paris Trend, uh, which uh, uh, dominates uh, the research procedures uh, nowadays and uh, applies uh, significant uh, pressure uh, on uh, researchers uh, to publish uh, in intense rates. Uh, so uh, these are the reasons why uh, we have uh, uh, this uh, explosion uh, in the published uh, research uh, content and also uh, partly uh, the second part also uh, um, explains and why we are experiencing uh, a, a drop uh, in the quality sometimes. Uh, so do we have any solution? Um, not a solution that uh, can, could work uh, for anything. There are no silver bullets in this, uh, but uh, there is a traditional uh, field, uh, the field of scientometrics uh, that uh, attempts to provide uh, uh, impact measures and indicators. Uh, quantifying the impact of uh, publications, trying to estimate the impact, uh, could facilitate uh, the identification of valuable research. Uh, and um, uh, during the last years, uh, due to uh, the increased popularity and adoption of uh, the open science initiatives, uh, we have the momentum, momentum to, uh, to make uh, the calculation of such measures possible. Uh, because uh, previously, uh, most of the uh, valuable data to perform this type of analysis uh, were uh, restricted uh, inside uh, publishers' data silos. Uh, but due to open science initiatives, now we have data that we can we could use uh, towards a, a better uh, research uh, impact assessment. And um, um, this is why. Uh, most academic search engines like uh, Google Scholar uh, provide uh, functionalities that combine uh, keyword search uh, with uh, some uh, scientific impact measure, uh, usually the citation counts uh, to rank publications. Uh, but uh, this is not the only application. There are numerous others uh, that could uh, benefit from uh, accurate and uh, 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 concrete uh, impact measures. Uh, however, uh, measuring estimating impact uh, is uh, very difficult and uh, can easily uh, lead to, uh, um, uh, to misconceptions. There are uh, various uh, important pitfalls, uh, for example, uh, it is an oversimplification to, uh, to assume that uh, impact can be measured by only one uh, impact measure. Uh, you cannot rely on only one, uh, on only one uh, that uh, can fit uh, all the use cases uh, because uh, scientific impact is uh, complex, has uh, diverse aspects. And uh, each of these aspects uh, could be uh, most appropriate for uh, in under different scenarios. Uh, for example, here uh, we have two researchers, one experienced one uh, that is revisiting the machine learning field, and another one, a younger, uh, a young student uh, that uh, tries to make a survey for the same field. Uh, the the, uh, the first one uh, would like to identify currently popular articles having a hype, while the second one uh, would like to identify fundamental ones. Uh, so it is uh, these two sets of paper are not uh, maybe overlapping, but are not uh, completely uh, correlated. Uh, so uh, it would be uh, beneficial for each of them to use a different uh, impact metric uh, if this was possible. Also, this, one minute, uh, please, Tanasis. Yeah, this discussion about uh, scientific uh, uh, impact um, confuses impact with merit, which is another story, and uh, uh, it cannot be measured using uh, impact measures. Uh, there are other pitfalls. Let me go uh, further in the interest of time. Uh, but uh, the, the most important thing is that uh, to provide um, 
uh, an accurate uh, an accurate estimations about uh, the impact of uh, works you need to uh, to perform a multi perspective analysis of the impact and uh, the idea of bip toolbox is uh, this one uh, we create a set of services and resources uh, that calculate uh, multiple uh, impact measures uh, each of them trying to capture a different uh, aspect a different perspective and uh, we have a set of tools we have an open source library uh, that uh, can be used on large clusters and uh, calculate the scores uh, using as an input a citation graph uh, we have a tool bip finder that is a search engine uh, that uh, provides keywords uh, search uh, with uh, impact based ranking for the articles we have an API, an open API that uh, uh, gives uh, these measures for uh, the articles that we have uh, already calculated the scores and also a data set BIPDB uh, that can be downloaded from as a node. Finally, we have uh, the tool BIP for COVID-19, uh, which is a dedicated search engine for COVID-19 uh, literature and uh, also a respective uh, data set. Uh, and uh, the plan is that uh, all these open uh, resources can be used uh, by third parties to provide useful add added value services on top of them. Currently, the current the last version of the uh, BIPDB dataset, version 4, that will be released in the next few days, uh, contains impact uh, uh, five different impact uh, scores for about uh, 120 million publications. Uh, including data uh, from open citations, the last version of September 2021, uh, Microsoft Academic Research uh, dump from July 2021, and the Crossref dump from May 2021. I'm Our sorry, data... Anna, we, need, we need to stop. We are already three yeah, minutes but... uh, uh, beyond time. Okay, it, it, it was all I had to say in any case. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you I, 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 I'm sorry, but uh, we are already uh, uh, um, finishing the time for this uh, session. But anyway, I think there are some questions uh, already on the chat that I would like to people to be able to to address. So I think we can extend the session for two or three minutes more uh, 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 after the, the the time that is just ended. So I invite the speakers to turn off uh, to turn on again the. The cameras. I see there was some questions to Shifumi that I think she already replied. So uh, thank you. I don't know if you want to add something on that. And there are also questions uh, to uh, to um, uh, uh, I think. Uh, let me see here. Uh, to to uh, um, sorry to 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 Silvio and also to to Nicola and. Uh, and uh, 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 for Nicola, uh, I think uh, 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 there is a question. That how do you imagine the transition to new assessment models that include open science practices uh, and how to get out of the established pattern? And I could add this one. Uh, when we are talking about uh, open peer review, so open, uh, uh, open the reviews, you, you have uh, uh, choose to, uh, to have the the rating of the reviews closed. So uh, do we imagine to also uh, make uh, uh, the, the rating of the reviews also open? Uh, and if you can give this answer in uh, one minute, it will be uh, great. Uh, the, we, we, haven't, uh, we haven't, we thought about making the reviews open, but we are not ready for that yet. Uh, and uh, about another question, uh, I, uh, I I will be really, really quick. Uh, uh, I just want to uh, mention that ministry was financing it uh, until 2013. Then we made a new business model. And uh, some of the editorial boards actually thought that uh, um, uh, authors will rate the content uh, uh, competencies of uh, reviewers, which is not true. They are rating just the contribution to improvement of, of their peer reviews. So that's why they disputed it at first. Okay, thank you, Nicola. There was also questions about uh, the use of uh, of uh, uh, Scholix, uh, 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 Scholix Explorer by, by Saival and, and Scopus. I think Paolo Mangi already also replied on the 
on the chat. I don't know if uh, exactly is exactly the same thing that I was saying that Paolo have answered already to that question in the chat. Okay, thanks. And I just have a, a, so a very final kind of question and comment to 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 learn it. So uh, I think, of course, what you are planning to do is very interesting. Of course, you are aware of the the call that is closing in two days from Wydera, uh, the, there will be a, 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 a European project on reforming research assessment. But my, my, my question, uh, I don't know if you have any reflections on this, of course, and also in 30 seconds, I think there, there, uh, uh, there is a problem uh, also with the question of uh, the use of rankings uh, by, by universities. So the, 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 the university rankings are maybe a, a, a powerful uh, uh, stopper of uh, uh, of reforming research assessment. How, how do you have any reflection now to address this uh, this issue? Um, yeah, that's a very <laughs> interesting question to close on. Um, I, I think, I mean, if I can say what we're just trying to do, or what I'm what I'm trying to to establish as a process is is just something that. Um, even if let's say the results will not be as as advanced as we maybe or as, as I would maybe want them to be, I think it's it's a process under which we can actually raise a lot of awareness about issues that are in research assessment. I think because we will talk to people from the administration, from the different universities, to researchers, hopefully, or I mean, we must do that, and then we can raise all these concerns. So I think this is this is actually the the very basic start is to raise a lot of awareness about like what are the shortcomings of of like dominant systems in assessment, also in relation to ranking. Um, I, I think because not everybody is as aware as the people here in the audience, I think of these of these issues or does not just take the current system more for granted. And so so to convince people to start thinking about this is the first step, and then we will see how much impact we can start we can have through the project um, in, in relation to rankings I think this will this is another level to it that will certainly come up and the same issue for example for national assessment systems of universities which is something that goes beyond individual yeah. alliances as well so these are certain issues that will come up what the impact of our activity will be I, I hope there will be some but I don't want to promise too much either right now I will look forward and I'll keep it uh, on, on the radar because we, all, we are also trying to start doing something uh, uh, in Portugal and I know there are other alliances doing the same. So we are already five minutes running late. Uh, I think the demo sessions are already starting. So thank you very much to all for, for participating. I ask uh, a round of virtual applause to our, to our presenters uh, here uh, today. So thank you very much for your presentations and I uh, and look forward to see you in uh, other Open Science Fair sessions. So uh, currently there are the demo sessions already starting. And of course we will have uh, the, the a keynote uh, a presentation at uh, two o'clock uh, 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 this afternoon. So thank you very much and uh, enjoy the rest of Open Science Fair.